we've been dealing with the rate constant as if it were constant, but we know that's not really true. We know that each reaction has its own rate constant, and that's why we've had to solve for different rate constants for different reactions. And rate constants are also temperature dependent. As you change the temperature, you'll change the rate constant. Generally speaking, as you increase the temperature by about 10 degrees Celsius, you'll double the rate of your reaction. The Arrhenius equation shows the relationship between the rate constant K and the temperature. Now there are a number of things here in this Arrhenius equation. We have the rate constant. We have E sub A, which we've seen already as our activation energy. We have our old friend R, which is the ideal gas constant. We have our temperature T, which has to be in Kelvin. And the reason why has to do with the ideal gas constant. If we look up our gas constant, we know that there are different values of the gas constant depending on the units that you use. We often use the value of 0 0.08206 liters times atmospheres over Kelvin times moles. But when talking about energy, it's much better to use 8.314 joules per Kelvin times mole because that gives us joules as our unit of energy but it also means that we have to be in Kelvin. Z is a reference to collision frequency. How often are collisions occurring in your reaction? The more collisions you have, the greater your rate constant. P is something called the steric factor, and what this is referring to is how often will your collisions actually happen with the correct alignment. If your collisions are often misaligned, then your reaction won't go very quickly. But if your collisions are very likely to be aligned correctly, then you're more likely to get your activated complex and your reaction will proceed. Z and P are often combined together into something called the frequency factor. This is just how often are you going to have correctly aligned collisions or how often are you going to have successful collisions according to collision theory. The Arrhenius equation is often written like this. So again, here's your rate constant and then Z and P are combined into this term A which is your frequency factor. You have your activation energy, your ideal gas constant, again we're going to use that in joules, and then our temperature in Kelvin. Now we've seen from our integrated rate laws that it's really handy when we rearrange equations into the form of a line. So this is the same equation, but written in the form of y equals mx plus b. So to use this equation, we need to be graphing things very specially. On our y-axis, we're going to want the natural log of our rate constant. On our x-axis, we're going to want the inverse of our Kelvin temperature. So if you graph the natural log of your rate constant versus the inverse of Kelvin temperatures, then you can learn a couple of things. Your slope will be the negative value of your activation energy divided by the ideal gas constant and your y-intercept will be the natural log of that frequency factor. So if you're given data about rate constants at different temperatures, you can figure out the activation energy of the reaction directly from the graph.